Have you watched part one? Have you watched part two? Because if you haven't, you definitely shouldn't be watching this one. Although, maybe you already know part one and part two, in which case, you're excused. Limiting, yeah, that's easy. Just slap it on, whack it up until it sounds good and not too distorted, although maybe the distorted sound is something you're going for, in which case, great. But I want to show you a little trick that's really, really going to help you get your track sounding a lot louder. Remember, this mastering chain is designed to bring your demos up to scratch so you can reference them in your car, club, friends, sonos system, whatever it is. Don't take it too seriously, just enjoy the process and have some fun with it. I don't want you guys spending loads of time mastering, although it's something useful to use, and especially if you have a set of plugins that you can rely on and go to quickly. The idea behind this is just so you can bring things up to level, make them sound all right, and then tweak any changes in the mixes before sending to a proper engineer. If you are interested in learning to become a mixing or mastering engineer, this isn't a bad set of tools either. Now, before we crack on, even though this is the last video in the mini series, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell as well so you can be notified when I release these videos. Maybe I'm gonna do another mini series. In fact, I am gonna do another mini series on mastering in Logic. All right, limiting, let's go. Limiter number one, Command F, limiter. Let's open that up. Now what we're looking to do here is use two limiters together, one to deal with some of the peak ear transients and the other one to deal with the overall signal, which should result in a much louder sounding track. So we're actually gonna turn the look ahead off here and we're not gonna touch the game, we're just gonna bring the ceiling down until we're getting about two to three decibels of gain reduction. Now look ahead is a very clever technology that is usually found in digital limiters. It basically means that the software looks ever so slightly ahead of what's coming in and then decides how to react to it. I want to look ahead at the lowest value possible because the lower the look ahead, the more punch we get essentially. If the look ahead looks too far ahead, it's already decided what to do with the signal. And we can do that on the next limiter. But for now, we want something that's basically suppressing rather than doing a more general limiting. We're also going to check out the release now. Currently, it's on auto, which sounds pretty good, but I actually want the release to be a bit faster. So the limiter snaps back a little bit quicker after the gain reduction occurs. Again, the way to do this is just to be really extreme. Take it off auto, turn it all the way down, turn it all the way up, and listen to what sounds natural. <laughs> That's okay for now. Next up, let's add limiter number two. So, Command F, already got the limiter there. Let me hit enter, boom. We wanna set the ceiling at minus one decibel, which will compensate for any intersample peaks crossing past the limiter threshold, which might cause a bit of distortion when you're playing it back through your systems. I'm gonna leave the look ahead and I'm gonna leave the release and all I'm gonna do is increase the gain this time so that we get Again, two to three decibels of gain reduction, but listening out, using our ears to work out how much we need and when it starts to sound a little too unnatural. So first off, let's take that ceiling down to minus one, and then let's increase the gain until we get the appropriate amount of gain reduction. Oh, and you might want to turn your speakers down a little bit as I'm increasing this, because obviously it's going to get quite loud. Okay. 
This limiter here is just acting as a brick wall limiter. Using two limiters in sequence is an incredibly powerful way of making your tracks louder. There are cases where you can use limiter, clipper, limiter, or maybe use three limiters in three different ways. The point is that they're all doing something very gradual and very subtle. You don't want anything doing too much of the work at this point. Let's group the limiters and see how they sound on and off. Of course, there's gonna be a huge jump in volume, so please be careful when you're listening at home. I don't want you to hurt your ears or maybe damage your monitoring system. So let's select them both, Command G, and then turn them on and off. Now, as this is the final video of the mini series, what I want to do is turn everything on and off. Before I do that, I'm going to bring down the dry wet of this compressor. As I discussed in the previous video, it's not something that I uh, really wanted too much effect of. I didn't want too much of that glue compressor effect. And I'm going to pull down the dry wet ever so slightly as well of the saturator. Let's join this to the EQ group which means that we can now turn off the two EQs, the compressor and the saturator together all at once. But I'm gonna leave the limiters separate because obviously the limiters add so much volume, there wouldn't be any point in referencing really quiet to really loud. So let's turn these effects on and off here and then we can turn the limiters on and off again. Sounds good to me. You already know what the limiters sound like on and off. They are just adding that volume. Sometimes if you limit too hard, it can be a bit pumpy. In this case, we could probably pull back ever so slightly on them. But again, don't worry too much about these things. Don't spend too much time doing this when really, you could spend that time producing and making loads of beats and then delegating, leaving that up to someone else. So you can pump out as much music as possible. Guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Is there anything that you would have done differently? Is there something you want to let me know in the comments below? Something that you use from the Ableton Stop plugins in your mastering chain that you think really makes all the difference? As always, I'd love to know, so hit me up. Before you go though, hit that like and subscribe button so I can bring you these videos twice a week. It's been a lot of fun. I loved doing this mini series. We've got to do more of these. There is a mini series coming out on the 1176 compressor, the blue stripe that I'm building. Check out the first video called Seattle's Hidden Gem, where I actually go and visit in Seattle the guy, Mike Maybe, owner and founder of Herbal Audio, who sells DIY compressor kits, which is amazing. I'm actually gonna build it, and then we're gonna run a bunch of tests through it. We're even going to compare against the UAD version, the Waves version, and the Logic version, and so on. If you are a Logic user, remember I will be doing a whole other mini series mastering in Logic for you guys to tune into. It's been a pleasure as always. It's a big love from Noise. Peace.